Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Game Dev Tycoon. This is a game that has generated a lot of attention actually over the past couple of days uh, for a publicity Sunday ramp. I'll talk about that a little bit later and why I think that's neat or interesting at the very least. But at its core, this is a tycoon type game, you know, like a smooth operator's call center chaos or a roller coaster tycoon. But instead of trying to build a theme park or something like that, you are actually trying to build a game development company. You're not really going in and like tinkering, building the games yourself, but you set the parameters for what the games will be. So you say, okay, I'm going to generate. Uh, a fantasy RPG on the analog to the Game Boy because they don't actually use like Nintendo consoles and stuff, but it actually does mirror how the industry went about. And uh, you know we're going to include this kind of graphics, uh, this quality of sound, etc., etc. And you set all those parameters, and then you release it and see how it sells, and, and try to build your company. So uh, I've got to set the pause menu here because time is going to move pretty quickly. But I'm going to unpause, and you can see that I am running Doc Lore Games here. So this is my first game studio, and I've just moved into. Uh, a brand new office after originally just being this gentleman over here in my garage. So why don't we start with just developing a game. Right now I have a game called Bontra, which is just a Contra knockoff, which is selling really terribly and did not do well in the critical press. So what I'm going to do right here is develop a new game uh, with my $2.5 million in cash. And uh, now we've got a little bit of a, a brief pause where we can talk about things. So this is where you bring up your game concept. Uh, let's make a, a fantasy RPG. I've made... Uh I think three of these so before, and I've just been naming them kind of rip-offs of uh, original fantasy titles or original games, so I'm gonna call this Penultimate, or sorry, Penultima Fantasy, uh, I guess I can't, I'll just put three because I can't put the Roman numerals anymore. We're gonna make it a medium-sized game, uh, and you can see our cost change here as we do it. Uh, so I'm gonna go medium-sized game, we're gonna make it either for young people, mature people, or everyone, we'll go with everyone. Uh, and these, this is our genre list basically, or our, our topic, I guess, the theme for the game, I'm gonna go fantasy. Actually, you know what? Why don't we make like a Mass Effect clone? Oh god, what have I done? I've never seen that before. Go back. Okay, let's start that again. <laughs> so develop new game. We'll call it... Um, I, I don't mean to click and drag here. I am playing this on the PC, not on the uh, iOS, despite the swiping that you saw in there. So we're going to call this um, Weight Effect 1. It'll be a medium game for everyone. We'll make it a sci-fi RPG, which I have not made before, and you do get bonuses for being original. Uh, and, you know, now we can see the consoles that we have, and, um, we are in, like, the early 90s right now. So we've got the Game Boy, the Game Gear, Super Nintendo, PC, Sega Genesis, and the Sega Master System, which, you know, it, as time goes on, these will fade in and out of obscurity or, uh, popularity. Why don't we make this for the Super Nintendo, because that's gonna grow to become a very popular console, as we know. Uh, and we'll make this in the Moneymaker game engine, and I'll talk about that in a little while. So that's gonna be $220,000. Now, as we develop this... Uh, we're going to make it 2D Graphics version 3, which is going to cost us another $120. This is going to cost us $330 to start work on this, which is pretty expensive. Uh, but I do have this team over here. And as we work... Oh, why? I don't understand why the screen is getting a little bit cut off here. Oh, you know what? I think it's because I'm running it in windowed mode instead of full screen. Uh, but in any case, you can assign staff to uh, different elements of the game. So this is the game engine, this is the gameplay, and this is the level of story and quest. So we're going to balance this as we see fits. Uh, in order to uh, make for the best RPG that we possibly can. We could also, you know, move staff off of this. Like, if I wanted to, uh, I could put, you know, Northern Line on uh, Engine instead of Eduardo Hart. But we want to make sure that we're uh, balancing the workload between our people. You can't really see those green bars right now, but that's important. And we're also going to see what else we have over here. Uh, you know what, let's, uh, let's crank the engine up there a little bit. Uh, we're also going to see what selected features we have. So we do have... Um, Linear story, simple cutscenes, save game, multiplayer, and gamepad support. So these are all things that I've had to research externally uh, during the game. And as we develop this, we are going to get uh, these little orbs that'll pop out. And this is going to basically feed into how good our game is going to be, how good our Metacritic score is going to be, essentially, or how good our review scores are going to be, uh, and how many sales we get as a result. So we are making an RPG here. I think the dialogues should be good, but I doubt the AI has to be all that strong, so I actually am going to switch... Um, me and Eduardo, because Eduardo's been been working a lot lately, so if I could just click on him here. Uh, the game is not designed, apparently, to run in uh, windowed mode, so I apologize for this kind of weird control thing. I could put Lori Hardy on it, but she's going to be real busy. Or I can grab myself and uh, put myself on level design, and then maybe... Hmm, let me think about this for a second. Maybe we can put Lori Hardy on artificial intelligence, or no, let's put Eduardo Hart on artificial intelligence. There we go, that's perfect balance, okay. Uh, we have a level editor and better AI as well, again, those are things that I've researched. I'll talk about the research side in a while. There's a lot to talk about here, and the game goes very quickly, but what I wanted to stress is that uh, this design and technology score, this will feed into how good our game is and how well it's received. Bontra did not sell very well, it was definitely a financial loss for us. 
Uh, and you know what? This looks perfect. Everybody is working basically as hard as they can. Uh, world uh, design, graphics, and sound all seem fairly important in an RPG. Now, the reason I have so much money, I was originally just a, you know, one dude in his garage type of situation, but then I got an email and it was like, we've invented this new genre called, like, the virtual pet genre. Uh, would you like to buy our proprietary technology off of us? And then I did for 10000 and then the I invented uh, Tamagotchi, but I just called it Tamagotcha for the Game Boy, and it sold, like, 600,000 copies. So now I can afford my own office and a staff. Uh, but it hasn't been going well for me. I've kind of been hemorrhaging money. So now we're going to release the game. These are very good design and technology scores. Uh, and I'm going to hope that things go a little bit better than they have uh, for me recently. Because I have not done very well uh, with my past few games since Tamagotchi came out. So we get, you know, all sorts of experience here. This will make us better game developers in the future in specific areas. Uh, even though I, I do tend to adjust the sliders... Uh, pretty much more towards gameplay and away from story, because that's just the kind of person I am, I suppose. Um, they all seem to level up fairly quickly, or f at the same time, basically. The one exception is 2D Graphics V3, which I had to develop myself from an engine. So anyway, we also level up uh, the experience on our people. Uh, Eduardo Hart and Lori Hardy I just hired, so they're not that experienced yet, but soon. So now... Uh, we have reached level 5 of the character, and we're getting some kind of tutorial box. I'm only about an hour and a half into the game so far, uh, so we're going to see if we get something special here. This unlocks a special training item called Boost. The training for it is expensive, and you can only do it once the character has at least 500 designer technology points. That's like their attribute for designer technology, but the investment is well worth it. The Boost allows you to temporarily increase the output of your staff and can really help you make a hit game. Good to know. So now Northern Lion has special training available, and we can research uh, some new 2D graphics. So you know what? Why don't we go into research here just quickly... Uh, actually, you know what? Let, let's wait to go into research. First thing I want to do is just let the reviews come in. So we're going to get four reviews for Weight Effect 1, uh, and we're going to see. This is a, a pretty good indicator of how our game is going to sell. So we start with a 6. I like it. 6 is not horrible. Uh, it's not great, though. 7, enjoyable. I'm thinking this could be a modest hit, but um, quirky but good. I, I've released games in the 3s and 4s, and I, Tamagotcha actually got 9s and 10s. 9s uh, so and 10s seems to be a very feast or famine type market. If you get really great scores, uh, you can sell really well, but otherwise, um, usually you don't sell too great. Maybe that's, in, that's the same way it works in real life. I honestly don't know. So I've just opened up the research menu here. This is something that we can do to improve our games. Uh, so I, for example, I could research... Uh, let's look at something that's not too expensive. Or, you know, we might want to research... 3D graphics, because obviously with the Super Nintendo out, we want to get make sure that before the next generation of consoles, the PlayStation and the N64 come out, uh, we're going to be able to compete there. So let's start research. Um, someone is sending us an invitation to compete in a games convention known as G3. That'll be expensive, but uh, it might be awesome to do so as well. I don't know, maybe we'll check that out. So we're going to see sales for Weight Effect 1. Uh, you know, 10,000 copies in its first week is not terrible. We can also, if we wanted to, uh, you know, train somebody. So we could train uh, our... This is kind of our uh, senior engineer here, and we can also train uh, this game designer in this one. Whatever. It's costing us some money, but it also might pay dividends in the long run. So this uh, weight effect one is not selling necessarily as well as I might like it to. Let's see if maybe we can research another topic for a game. Why don't we make a... a I, some of these genres strike me as a little bit strange, I will admit. Like, as I'm developing this, I'm like, who wants a prison game? I guess prison architect, but, like, is that a common kind of genre that existed 20 years ago. Same with romance, uh, not really all that popular, uh, I think. Uh, but I did, like I said, I snagged Virtual Pet all the way down here, which allowed me to really kind of leap ahead in the industry. Uh, why don't we, let's not research a topic then. I could develop a game engine if I wanted to, but uh, the problem is, like, when you research things, that's all good, but in order to actually make games with them, you have to build a new engine. So, uh, this has not worked out too well for me. Uh, you can see the sales for Weight Effect 1 there. It's probably going to cap out at, like, 35000 not doing very well for us, but maybe let's let's try finding a publishing deal, because so far I've only been doing uh, indie development, basically. I'm like a self-funded company. Maybe we can get a publishing deal with the company. Uh, it's going to take a lot of our profits, but at the same time, they'll handle marketing for us, which is a big issue. So I hate to betray the indie cred here, but once your fan base is big enough, you can self-publish for your larger games without the need for a publisher. For medium games, you should aim to have at least 100,000 fans before you publish them yourselves. Okay, I have 7.8 thousand fans as you can see up there. So we probably want to uh, go with the contract here. It looks like, I just read that over very quickly, it looks like there's a minimum score term in the contract, which is actually really interesting. It's also very important to pay attention to the royalty rate. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Electronic mass productions will allow us to make any topic of an adventure game. It has to get at least an eight, be medium. Uh, I don't know what penalty means, that frightens me. Oh, what, maybe this one I can make. Virtual pet action game, uh, eight, percent royalties up front pay 75,000 mature a mature virtual pet action game 
for the Game Boy. You know what? I can absolutely do that. Uh, I'm the only person out there making Virtual Pet games, so this should work pretty well for us. So we're going to make a mature Virtual Pet action game. Uh, I'm going to name it Tamagotcha M. I'll go through my game history as well so you can see my successes and failures a little bit later. Uh, we'll make this in the Money Maker game engine, which is my, like, Unreal 3, basically. And why not use the most advanced graphics, because I have the feeling this could be a hit. And we need to sell a ton of copies if we're going to get uh, substantial royalties from the... Uh, the publisher, of course. So, let's think about this as a virtual pet game. Uh, we don't really need much in the way of story at all, I would say. We need gameplay to be high, and sure, why not uh, focus on the engine as well. And then we'll let these guys pump in. Uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot of points go into design and technology, and that worries the shit out of me. So he says, I'm Steve O'Connell, a reporter for Planet GG, where we've heard a rumor your company is developing a game for mature audiences. Would you be willing to give us an interview? Sure, let's do it. Uh, hopefully this will provide us with some kind of benefit here. They'll publish it next week. Now, please get more points in design and technology, because I am very concerned about our success so far. Uh, the game is working on its first game, or the company is working on its first game targeted at mature players. We think players are looking for more mature content, and that is why we are making a Tamagotchi game. Uh, sooner or later, games with mature themes will become more common. That's, what's really cool about this game that I haven't talked about, and I haven't talked much about my impressions, but it, that is always a positive sign. I think this game is really addictive. It's a little bit superficial. It has a very iOS-y type interface, which is either bad or completely irrelevant, depending on your perspective on things. Uh, but it's just fun to play. It's just fun to kind of exist in this world. And it does a very faithful job of recreating the way that the industry was. You know, I, I've been at this for eight years, if you look in the top right. When I started, it was like Commodore 64 and PC competing, competing against one another. And then slowly, like, at the same time that they would have been introduced in the real world, uh, they are introduced in the game. So you have to, you know, plan for the future and you'll see announcements like, Oh, Nintendo is working on a uh, Super Nintendo CD version with Sony, and then all of a sudden, like, things have gone awry and now Sony's developing their own console. Uh, it, it's just... If you are a geek about the gaming industry, you know, as of 20 years ago, as far as I know, this goes into the modern era. I definitely saw some people talking at least about the Xbox and PlayStation 2 era. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you're a geek about the gaming industry, I think you'll get a lot of uh, tickles out of this, shall we say. So, uh, we're still hyping here, I guess. Hype 1 is probably... Not that good. It's essential to build hype to ensure players are excited about your game. Hype is mostly generated through random events, but once you gain more experience, you can use marketing and other strategies to gain hype. I haven't researched marketing. I mean, what can I say? Pure elite gameplay mechanics here are the only thing that matters at Doc Lord Games. So, uh, I would say, how's it going so far? Mm, seems like this might not be the most well-received game of all time, but at the same time, it only has to get a 5 average score, which is not that substantial. So we're going to crank down these dialogues. Uh, and we're going to crank up artificial intelligence here. And in doing so, yeah, I think this is what I want. In doing so, this should allow us to get a, a better game. Like, the way, th there is like a, a mixture between genres. It's not, uh, I, I don't want to go to this convention. We'll take a small booth. Um, wait, let me just pause for a second so I can get some in my thoughts around this again. It's not just like random whether you're going to get a, uh, like a good score or a bad score. Like, that depends on... The topic and genre you pick, like fantasy RPG, makes a lot of sense. Comedy action game maybe doesn't make so much sense and gives you a lower chance of success. Uh, so, our boss have discovered that re some really dedicated fans of Game Number 18 have created a fan game using a lot of the material from our game. They don't make money and just seem to do it for fellow fans. Our, legals, our legal advisors strongly suggest that we shouldn't allow this to go on. What do you want to do? Uh, we will let them be again. Be be the change you want to see in the world. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. So it's not just like you know throwing a dart at a board and seeing what works. There actually is like some real world basis for it. Uh, I think we can afford for world design to be a little lower. And then why don't we put uh, Lori Hardy on uh, graphics? Because Eduardo Hart is working too hard. And you know what? Maybe we can put Eduardo then on sound, uh, or maybe not. I, I, I suppose not. You know what, we'll just we'll have to overwork ourselves a little bit here. Or we can crank our sand, sound value down. Oh, but now Lori's working too hard. Alright, you know what, this is fine, Eduardo. You'll, and maybe if I put Eduardo on world design, I hasn't really balanced it out all that much, but sure, whatever, this is okay. I mean, obviously we would have like an artist for this in real life, and etc, etc. Uh, so Denise Reed is happy for us. We're the best company in the world and I'm glad I can be a part of the fan community. Y'all oh, thanks Denise Reed. We have gained 649 fans. That's actually pretty significant. That's like 8% of our total fandom. This game is not going well for us. Um, weight effect is off the market and it did not sell very well at all. This might be a good time to go into our game history. So you can see uh, there's weight effect one. Uh, we lost $60,000 on that. I might only have like a 
a good review or a, a good profit from uh, the Tamagotchi, honestly. So, Bontra. Oh, wait, I didn't want to go all the way back here. Let's check out Bontra. That was a Super Nintendo pirate action game. I lost $343,000. We made a fantasy RPG on the Genesis that had multiplayer. Got a 5.75 average review score, which is not that good, but uh, it did make us $139,000. Grand Tour 2 was my Gran Turismo ripoff on the Genesis. It, uh, a multiplayer racing game did 8.5 and uh, sold a million copies, but there we go. Tamagotcha. Uh, cost us $76,000 to make 9.75 review scores. Uh, and made us $3.7 million in profit. I've had some varying successes and failures. Freddy Farkas Returns on the Game Boy didn't do so well. Uh, President Sim 1, you know, kind of like the political machine, uh, did pretty well. Made $143,000 back when that mattered to me. Metris, my military action puzzler, uh, did okay as well. Jump Dogs uh, made me some money. Penultimate Fantasy 1 actually did really well for us. Empires 1 was not as popular as Civilization, sadly. Super Marty Bros, another racer, uh, did pretty well for me. Anyway, we don't have to go all the way back through these. Uh, I'm interested to see how this game works out for us. Uh, I'm interested to see how this publisher deal works out for us. I have no idea what this is right here. Um, we're making Tamagotcha M. And I guess this is the number of people that are walking by our booth. Uh, is anybody stopping to talk to us? Because, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of mobile developers at PAX, and oftentimes they look very lonely. Not that this is being developed for mobile, I suppose, but it is a, a casual game. Let's close this up. Uh, we had 45,000 people visiting our booth. We didn't make it into the top 100 booths this year. Surprise, surprise. But if we gain more fans, I'm sure we will. All right. I don't think this game turned out that well for us. Those are pretty low scores, really, all things considered. But we did level up in a few things anyway. At the very least, it'll be a learning experience. This could be our Aliens Colonial Marines. Uh, so I want to see how the uh, the reviews come in for this. We've got to get at least a five. If we get under, oh my god, it's going to be under a five. Waste of time. That is not a good start. Please, I need like a single ten here. Informed Gamer gave us a three. Oh my god, Game Hero gave us a one. This is the worst game we've ever made. Abysmal, they say. Um, I, I don't think our publisher is going to be too happy about that. We have research sequels though. But hey, you know it's not selling that bad. Uh, so we have now paid like a hundred and sixty thousand dollar or a hundred thousand dollar penalty, but the game's selling, man. Look at how many units this thing's pumping out. I guess that's because we're with a major publisher. But oh yeah, apparently they've fallen way below expected numbers. So my bad, I guess. Uh, given how badly we're doing right now, this is probably a good time to develop a custom engine and maybe uh, come out with our first three D graphics engine, which we will call uh, Real Engine Three. Not to ape anything else, of course. Uh, that you might have heard of previously in the past. Let's add AI companions. Let's spare no uh, no expense here. Uh, and next, I'm going to create a racing game because that seems to be what my uh, what my people know. This girl needs a vacation. You go on vacation uh, because you are super exhausted. Actually, this guy's super exhausted as well. So we're just going to have me here now. Now it costs me like seventy thousand dollars a month just to keep this office afloat. Uh, so. I'm just going to have Northern Line develop his own engine here. Our company is kind of in financial trouble uh, as a result of the kind of staunch failures of the past few games. And we're going to throw everything we've got at the wall, uh, and we're going to try to make maybe a Grand Tour 3, because that was a big seller. So here's the announcement of the play system. Uh, you might seem like this, it might seem like this looks easy, but I encourage you to play it for yourself. By the way, in terms of like a you know meta talk about this game, uh, you can buy it standalone from the game developer's website, which I will link in the video description below, and it's eight bucks. So the, the publicity stunt that actually got uh, this, these guys a lot of buzz and got me to notice them uh, was they basically released a cracked version of their game on uh, the Pirate Bay. Well, they didn't say it was the Pirate Bay. Now the PlayStation's released, but it, I, I probably can't afford a licensing the licensing fee for it right now. Uh, but they released a cracked version of the game of the Pirate Bay. But what they did is make it so that it's impossible to win, basically, because over time, like, at a certain point, piracy will just start cutting into your profits and eventually it'll go out of business. Which is kind of interesting, you know, obviously that's uh, incendiary to a certain extent. It makes people, uh, it gets the people talking. It's provocative, you know. No, whether you feel like that's a shitty tactic or a funny tactic, uh, it got me to notice the game and I'm glad I did because I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. But again, uh, it is uh, eight bucks available on their website standalone, which will be linked in the video description below. Okay, so now we've got to really throw it all at the wall here. We're going to develop a medium game for everyone. We've had great success with racing simulations. That's what we're known for. Uh, and we're going to make that on the... I, I ooh, Maybe I could make it on the PlayStation. It's got a much bigger market share than the SNES already. So, you know, we'll pay the $200,000. We're going to throw it all at the wall. And uh, we're going to make this in the pretty real engine. Uh, we're going to... Why can't I use 3D graphics? Well, I'm not gonna... What's the point of putting it on the PlayStation if it's only gonna be 2D graphics, man? A 2D racer? 
I don't know if that's going to sell too well for us. Um, well, we could always put it on the Game Boy. But I don't think people on the Game Boy want, like, a, a 2D racing game. Uh, whatever. Let's, let's see the, how accurate the game is. We'll put it out here. Uh, yeah, let's do a text-based three <laughs> text-based racer on the uh, the PlayStation. I'm sure that'll work out really well for us. So we're gonna hemorrhage money here, but I'm also hoping that uh, perhaps we manage to do okay uh, with respect to our Metacritic score. Basically, I think Metacritic does get invented later in this game. So it's a racing game. We don't need like anything on story. We need gameplay and engine. Unless I wanted to make a story-based racer, I always thought a game like that would be kind of cool. Uh, we're at Hype 1. I wonder if I... Can I sign a publisher contract or something? Maybe I have to go down to my actual person here. Maybe not. All right. Uh, let's see if we manage to make something happen here. You know, those are pretty good scores for the first phase of design. Uh, maybe we're still with the same publisher. I don't know. Or maybe they publishers decided they didn't want to work with us anymore. Again, uh, we don't need anything on the uh, dialogues front. So we can put Lori Hardy maybe on level design, because she's a designer at heart. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next phase. I have not min-maxed this whatsoever, so I have no idea how this is going to work out for us. By the way, I haven't talked about bugs at all either. You get these bugs in programming, it's a pretty simple system. Uh, and then before the game comes out, you can basically choose whether to spend some time working on bugs or not, and I obviously always do uh, in order to make sure that people don't get pissed, because otherwise, you know, the fans will get pissed and they'll be like, you have to send out a patch or something. So Eduardo Hart is working pretty hard here on uh, world design. Maybe we should switch him and us. Like, if we could put Eduardo, uh, I don't know why sometimes it makes this difficult. Let's put Northern Line on World Design. Uh, it doesn't really help us, but if anyone's going to work hard, I want to work hard as the boss. I did develop in this in the Pretty Real Engine, did I not? I don't know. Maybe this will be a, an anomaly. It'll be a great selling 2D racing title on the 3D generation of consoles. The scores are pretty good. They're definitely way better than, uh, than uh, Tamagotcha M was, which was considered a, a success, or a, a terrible success. It seems the market... Responds particularly well to games with new topics at the moment. Well, yep. Here we go. 2D Racer. Alright, so we've got, we got good scores here. Let's finish this. This will probably be the last game that we'll release here. we got a new record in terms of design. Uh, technology's a little bit below that, but that's okay. Uh, we've leveled up in a couple of things, including uh, Lori Hardy, who is now level 2. Let's release the game and see how we do. Uh, if we totally have a disaster here, uh, our company is probably going to go out of business because I only have $146,000 left. And again, that's like two months of operating income for my business, which is not very good. So we're really going to be hoping for sevens or above here. Uh, that is a, a six. Uh, it's a seven. Okay. Uh, we, we barely ticked into the seven there. This is really heartbreaking, man, sometimes. Okay. We got an eight. And now we're going to get a uh, seven. And I'm feeling pretty confident about the fact that this game could pull our company out of the doldrums now. Uh, let's see how we managed to do here with the sales. Oh, this is what allowed me to get the virtual pet genre the first time. So let's see what we've got. The crypt message. This is a very special offer. Our region, our re agents have recently managed to borrow some research information which might be of interest to you. Uh, if you transfer 16,000 to the enclosed uplink location, we'll contact you. We have invented mystery. Ah, oh, that's not really what I was looking for. Please, please sell. It's not terrible, but at the same time, I don't think this is going to... Well, you know, it's actually doing fairly well for us. Maybe we can look into some publishing contracts and, and try to make one more game, but... Uh, I, I think I'm going to call it quits for now. I think Doc Lord Studios, thanks to uh, Grand Tour 3, is gonna, I just named Game 22 because I'm an idiot, apparently, is going to sell all right. And, uh, you know, with that in the books, thanks for everybody for watching. This has been Game Dev Tycoon. I would strongly encourage you to uh, check out the game. It has a free demo, and there is uh, the opportunity to purchase it for $8. Stand alone from the uh, website, which I have linked in the video description below. As always, thanks for you guys for watching, and in any case, I'll see you next time.